If we got to go? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Councillor Mayer. Yeah, huru te marino, ya faka papa ponamu te moana, a hura hima tato itirangine, aroha atu, aroha mai, tato yasato katua. Thank you. For those of us who are not with us very often, in the case of an emergency, there is a door through which probably you came, there's a door behind me also. Let us hope that. Uh, none of us needed. Um, do we have any apologies? We do not. Um, do we have any conflicts of interest? We do not. Um, so we come to acknowledgements. I wish to make two acknowledgements. The first is to all of those servicemen and service women who are part of our district, who continue to serve in the armed services, um, acknowledging the risks that they take uh, when they do so. And my second acknowledgement is a gift from Terry Cameron of Featherston. Terry is a distinguished person from our district who is notable for a number of reasons, one of which is he was the first person to swim Cook straight from south to north in 1972. Most swimmers go the other way. For obvious reasons, but that's got nothing to do with the acknowledgement, just thought I'd mention it. Um, he was the Secretary of Internal Affairs from 1990 to 1994, and while he was leading the department, the first four volumes of the Dictionary of New Zealand Biography were printed. Uh, this is the foremost reference work on the lives of people who shaped this country's history. Um, now, for today, people want to read something to so electronically. Uh, Harry had original printed copies of the first four volumes in his possession because he was the, in charge of the department. He has the first two, which are in English, and the third and the fourth, which are in Maori. Last week, he donated those four volumes to the South Wire at the library system. Um, Annette Beatty and I have sent him a letter of gratitude for his generous gift. Are there any other acknowledgments? So we come to public participation, um, and we have two. I'm going to invite Robin to come first, please. Um, Robin is a recent graduate, I think, of Victoria, and a climate activist. So welcome, Robin. You have five minutes from the moment I push the button on my clock. And if you stop before five minutes, then people potentially will ask you questions. But if you go to five minutes, I'm sorry, but that's it. Go for it. Okay, thanks. Um, so this is my packet that I've been taking to all the climate projects I've been going to the last three years. Um, I'm just gonna put it here. Um, so my name's Owen Ramsden. Some of you know me, some of you, most of you don't. So I've been a resident of Peterson and a great for 13 years. My husband works for Stats New Zealand. He's involved in the census. He works weekends now. Um, we have two boys. My eldest attends Kurunami College and the youngest is still at Peterson School. I have a cat Neo who's 16 and we have three waste disposal chickens. Harry, Ron and Hermione. Um, so um, I was on the Peterson Community Board while the Napier was mayor and I would spent more than half that time as chair of the board. So I know. Uh, so I've just completed, uh, in 2019, before I finished up on the community board, actually went back to university to do a degree in geology with a minor in science and society. In science and society, we did a lot of climate change stuff. Um, we also did press and some other really cool things. So I've spent the last four years actively reducing our family's carbon footprint, and that has me going without sometimes. Um, and the chickens were uh, part of that process recognizing that we have waste that we have to get rid of. The chickens are particularly good at that. They also produce eggs when they feel like it. They're not eggs producers, really. Um, they're, they're more precocious. Um, and they're very good communicators. Um, so the most expensive step for us was the EV, and it was a second-hand 30 kilowatt leaf. Does 99% of our, trip, our trips, so that's, that's fun. Um, and I'm organising and education is part of what I do as well. So I'm into science communication. So um, 
now that I've finished my studies and looking for something to do, because when you if someone who's highly educated gets bored, they do stuff. I'm sorry. Um, uh, so I have uh, jumped in with a group called Aotea Climate Strike Coalition, which is made up of the School Strike for Climate group, Fridays for Future, and some other um, groups that want to get together and do a climate strike. So this is an invitation because I organised a climate strike for the Friday the 26th of May in the Squirrel in Featherston. So we're starting at one. Um, that's pretty fluid. <laughs> I'm going to talk to people about climate change. Um, I invite you to come along and listen to the community and what they have to say about climate change and how it affects them because in so many cases it's very personal how it affects people. Um, uh, so my next steps that I'll be emailing all and calling all the schools now that everyone's back. Um, I've already booked in to uh, talk to the Maori Standing Committee <laughs> and I'll be doing them on Thursday night. Um, and just to give you a heads up on our demands, there's four demands, to reduce the emissions now. So 50% real reduction in emissions by 2030. So that is seven years away. Um, enable 100% transition to a regenerative agriculture by 2030. Harder, but worth doing. Priorities, prioritise fertility-centred climate justice and lower the voting age to 16. So, oh, excuse me, what was the third one? Um, the last one? Sorry. Uh, prioritise fertility-centred oh, yeah. climate justice. Yeah. 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 All these will be coming out on Facebook. They've already been putting out the main advertising on Facebook already. That's done by the main group. Um, I have uh, advertising in the Phoenix. So that's all sorted out. And I've... Um, already invited one of my lecturers to come and talk about climate change. He's the one who taught me yeah. the most. That's very complicated. Um, but also very exciting because I love science. So do you have any questions? Right, we have one minute. Um, who's going to be first? Oh, no, oh, how about the expansion on the on the uh, Tauriti one you talked about, the, yeah. the one, yeah, a little bit of expansion on that, the, the climate justice for the under the treaty? Uh, so that is varied from location to location, and it's one of the things I'm going to be finalising with the Māori Standing Committee is to make sure that um, when I advertise, I have that orientated properly for our area. So I'm not willing to say anything about so it. We can work on progress. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can look it up. Oh no, don't worry. Don't but I don't think it's going to run out of time. You run out of time. Yeah. Yep. It, what do you? Yeah. Um, yes, Colin. Oh. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so, Robin, you are aware that we have a climate change committee. Yes. Uh, and I, I take it that you'll be uh, uh, vocal to that committee in, in terms of uh, what you're trying to drive. Um, uh, yes, okay. I, I plan to go. I'll go within some Thank you. Yeah. Councillor. Um, thanks, Cam, Robin. Um, I'd be interested to see on if you look at both sides of the story, both sides of the story for climate change. For instance, Sweden have just completely abolished their Climate Environment Ministry for the first time in 35 years. Uh, there's also a book by a guy named uh, Bjorn, Lutz, uh, Bjorn Lumberg about called False Alarm, which has some very good information in it. And another geoscientist from Australia by the name of Ian Plimmer, who's very interest, interesting to talk to, that have alternative... No, no relative. <laughs> so only one, only one M. He's only got one M. Yeah, he's not quite as classy. So, I mean, everyone has their opinions. Um, but science facts are science facts. Yeah, well, some of the so, science facts on the other side are science facts as well. So, okay. <laughs> we, we, we have um, we have reached uh, time limit, and we don't normally debate things at this stage. So, thank you very much, Rob. <laughs> Thanks, and, uh, uh, I'm going to invite. Jim Hedley up. Uh, Jim is a uh, Robin Duncan, you're, 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 you're well known uh, farmer uh, from Featherston. And under different circumstances, I might have asked him to talk about regenerative farming, but I'm not going to debate today because I believe he really needs to talk about water raising. You have five minutes. Uh, this, this is about the Marua water race. This problem is more to do with the previous council, but they had left it <coughs> to this council to the sort out. A bit of background. Great Town was when first settled 
had had a lot of small holdings to dock water supplied via the water race. The town has expanded and the water race has now become the town stormwater system. A part of the stormwater system exits and flowing through to the river through Bill Drusianic's property, which is the only property between the town and the river. He objects to pay water, uh, pay water race rates, for which is now stormwater outlet to the river is not fit for stock. Uh, the water, the, 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 the stock water, it comes into the town as stock water, then is water race, and then is meant to go out as stock water. Um, the, uh, Bill Drusianic uh, sent a letter to the chairman of the water race committee in June 2020. At that time, Colin Olds was the chairman. I was a committee member at that time, and Bill approached me about his problem. I talked to Colin about bringing the letter up at the next subcommittee meeting and, and was informed as it was addressed to the chairman, it was up to him what he presented to the subcommittee. On the 30th of June, 2020, the subcommittee was to have a workshop about a, about a survey on the water race. I then tried to have Bill Drudianic letter put on the agenda for discussion, but this was rejected by Colin, stating it was a workshop so it could not be discussed. There was nothing stopping us having a meeting first to discuss the letter, then closing the meeting and moving on to the workshop. Bill Drusianic then sent the same letter addressed to the chairman and committee of the water rate. The, the letter has never been put on the agenda or discussed by the water rate subcommittee and Bill Drusianic has never received a reply to the letter. I then went to the Official Information Act requesting all the correspondence addressed to the Chairman of the Water Race Committee. Council reply came with the response, have a meeting with the CEO and the Chairman of the Water Race Committee. I replied, 3rd of the 9th, 21. That was not the, the, the way to apply to reply to an official information request. So send me the information request and then I'll decide whether a meeting is required. Having received no reply, I then went to the Ombudsman. On the 20th of the 3rd, 2023, I received a copy of Bill Drusianic's letter from the Ombudsman. Uh, the council stated to the Ombudsman, Ombudsman that they had already sent it to me. I have received nothing from the council. From the time Bill Drusianic sent the letter on the June 2020, is now almost three years, and he has still not received a reply from council. This is totally unacceptable and disgraceful. In the meantime, Bill Drusianic has had to pay water race rates to have urban stormwater pass through his property. When there should be, be no cost to him, then why are those urban properties that have the water race running through their properties not paying water race rates? double standards. How many years will it take council to respond and make the right decision or will it be filed in the trash once more? I present the reducted version of Bill Drazianic's letter that I received from South Warren, through the Huntsman from South Warren Council. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. Right, one minute to go, Joe. So you haven't seen it. That's it. Right, that's it. Oh, well, look, thanks very much, Jim. Um, well, can I assure you, A, um, that I, I'm sure the reason Mr. Drusianic didn't get a reply probably represents some sort of stake or possibly an error on the um, post office's part. I will guarantee to you uh, that we will look up that letter. Um, we will frame a reply and I will deliver it in person. Um, the second thing I can assure you is that um, I will put the subject of the rates on Mr. Drusy Annex property onto the agenda of the next infrastructure committee, which, when is that, Councillor? Is anybody here at the top of the beginning of June? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, <coughs> so that's um, about a month away. Yep. And um, now, are there any questions from anyone? Okay, thank you. Uh, for you, cheers. Uh, hmm.
He's sitting in discussions within the council, within councillors and council officers about uh, the water races um, and uh, with our water advisor. Um, we are wanting to have a, a meeting uh, between councillors or some councillors and officers to work out um, a way forward. And I think by um, having a chat with the mayor and, and having a look at that letter from Bill Drews, we can encompass that, those issues there into um, our discussions on the water races. So certainly we'll be looked into, Jim. Well, he, he recognised that it is the outlet uh, to the river for the, the town stormwater. And my understanding from him is he's still agreeable to have the stormwater outlet, but he refuses to uh, reject the paying um, water race rates for an outlet to the river. Uh, and, and part of the water race can be blocked off before it gets to his place. No need for it. Yeah. He's, he's done the, the work. And, yeah. and so so, all, so that's, all that's, that's, that's probably an issue that will come up when uh, Councillor Aiden. But my, my point is yeah. that there's been no reply to him. Yeah, no, I, we, we, we understand. There were opportunities. Yeah. 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 Councillor. Oh, sorry, I just, um, yeah, just, just a point of clarification, a couple of things. And I, don't know. Do we? Can we uh, discuss this in uh, actions from public participation? I don't see that on our agenda. Uh, it's next. Uh, actions from public participation. Yeah, I haven't seen that. But just um, but I'm putting it on whether it's there. Or okay. There. Yeah. You know, no, that's fine. So I just said, just in terms of a point of clarity, is is that following Mr. Drusianek's letter for the benefit of uh, councillors' information, um, a meeting was arranged. Uh, Harry attended it. Uh, you and Stitt, I think, in those days attended it. We've met. With Bill Drusianic, who completely understood his problem. So, um, uh, the Water Race Committee had discussed it uh, on numerous occasions. And I think you'll find that that's actually recorded in some of the minutes as well, Jim. Yeah, I think I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, okay. And that's fine. So, so, I'm just. just yeah. These things can be. Yeah. Uh, yes, you're right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, thank you very much, Jim, and um, grateful for your time thank coming you. along. Jim, good thank you. Yeah. 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 And uh, so, whether it's on the agenda or not, <laughs> are there any matters arising? I just um, Thanks, I think, I think um, in, in Bill Drusianek's case, uh, given Jim's um, uh, comments, I think it does need further investigation. I have no doubt about that at all. Um, Bill Drusianek has been um, uh, providing uh, Greyhound stormwater discharge uh, through his property now for a large number of years, and also the fact um, that he has to pay rates, water race rates, at the same time, and he, yet he has no use oh. for the water race. So, uh, and that's been identified and it's been acknowledged by council officers over the past. How we deal with it uh, is a bigger picture on discharge of uh, stormwater within the Great Town network. So, um, right. So, I think it needs some some work. Well, let's we're, we're in the process of discussing rates shortly. Aren't we? Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just make yeah, a couple of comments? Um, Jim, you're probably very much aware that this water race issue has been a hot topic, certainly in the last council, and particularly with regard to the Great Town. And it's not it's not stormwater. It's the flood. It's the over burden of stormwater because most of the stormwater goes into the ground. So it is the flooding part that goes into yeah, yeah. right. Um, but I think what you're going to find is with the new water regulator coming out, um, we're, we're facing a very difficult problem of the quality of the water in the water race. And they will be telling us what the quality is going to have to be. And if it's going to have all this, like you like you correctly point out, the flow, the overflow from within the town, um, there's going to be a very, very big bill to clean it up. Um, and it's not going to be a rural bill, it's going to be an urban bill because the, the contaminants, the heavy metals, are not coming from the hills, they're coming as the water race comes through the town. And, and we have identified this um, in the last planning um, a lot. It is a very difficult subject and it's going to be a very expensive solve. But in terms of the water, the rates issue, that's a, that is a very small part of a very, very big problem. Councillor Wood. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, on that point, Alistair, makes me wonder because one of those water races, I'm pretty sure, runs through the main road and the gutter, mm. the gutter flow off from the main highway goes into the water race. So Correct. is there any way to get funding from transit for their <laughs> gutters and whatnot and roading that is creating part of the problem? Mm. Yes, I was just thinking about all the, all the uh, logging trucks. 
parts that uh, skid along. And Diesel and leaks, everything from all the vehicle, any vehicle. It's, it's right across the whole town, and, and, it's, and it's more peculiar to Greytown than Featherston. I quite, um, yeah. Worship, I quite like to hear from Harry, uh, because Harry was involved uh, in his uh, initial induction, I think, as a, as a CE of the organisation. I recall taking him onto the farm and the vehicle and, um, <laughs> right. and having numerous discussions, so I'd quite like to hear Harry's so. Yes, thank you. Very, very yeah. mysterious. Um, yes, we did meet with um, Bill, as indicated by Councillor Holmes. I also met with him probably a year ago as well um, to explain that the, what the means that to resolve this issue is actually through the rating review, because um, the, the rate is struck in a way that doesn't capture urban communities. And so I personally explained that to him, um, which he understood. I was not agree, um, but um, just to clarify, but if, to resolve this, it actually remains a decision through the rating review about how you strike rates. Thank you. And he was advised, right. Uh, just, just out of curiosity, does anybody know off their head roughly what the race rate is on? That? What is that? Um, by, no, no, I'm just, yeah, I've seen it, but I can't recall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you very much. It is, it is a lot cheaper than the, the normal water rates. It's all per, per hectare or per, per meter. That's correct. Land value, whichever. Yeah, okay. thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Right. So um, what we are going to do now is come to the minutes of the last meeting. And um, of April, uh, do I have anybody who wishes to move that we accept them? Thank you, Councillor McCauley. Do we have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Gray. And, uh, an apology. It was kind of an apology at the last meeting. Okay. Well, actually, yeah, indeed, that is a small problem. So, yeah. Um, so we, we might um, move that Councillor Gray be the mover um, in view of the fact that um, you were not with us. Uh, not great. And that no, uh, Councillor Sadler Potter be the second. Uh, uh, Councillor Gray, do you have anything you wish to comment on that? Uh, no? Okay, any comments from anybody? Okay, all in favour of accepting the minutes of the last meeting, please say aye. Okay. No, no, no. Thank you again. Right, okay. Um, are there any matters arising from those minutes? There are not. Um, right, now we'll come on to agenda item B1. Uh, which is the proposed annual plan consultation document. And um, over to you, Mr. Chief Executive. Thank you. Um, so we have some documents that we would um, like to um, give to you. Um, so if people could have the opportunity um, to... Yeah, I'd like to move that we adjourn to allow councillors the time to read. It was suggested maybe we get through the other items and then adjourn, but I'm open hmm. to advice. This is the main item. Yes. yes. Right, but I'm happy to see you. The deputy mayor moves that um, we adjourn for... Wow. Well, 15 to 20 minutes, like uh, as a minimum. 20 minutes? Yep. Yep. Hang on, wait, wait. One? We, 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 we've got a recommendation that's been moved. Yes. We'll, we'll see if there is a seconder, then we will discuss it, and we will vote. So I'm happy to second it, yes. So, can we the whole seconder? Do you wish to add anything? Um, I just, the document is being tabled today. Uh, seven of the councillors have, have yet to read it. Um, so, I I do think that we just need to be flexible with that adjournment to allow them time to take to digest. That, that was all I would say. Uh, yeah. Yep, happy to um, induce. Right, okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. In all the time that I've been a councillor, this is the first time that a document so important, the draft annual plan, we have not even had oversight to look at it prior to this meeting, to be able to, to be handed it at the meeting and to be asked to make a decision on it 
without being able to actually take the time, not just to read it, but to absorb it, to be able to actually, I, I'm, I'm absolutely flabbergasted, absolutely flabbergasted. This is one of the most important documents that controls what we do in council. And the fact that it wasn't, a, that we haven't even had it for, for 24 hours to be able to have a look at it, even in a rough format. I, as governance, and I'm really sorry, but I just feel like this seems to be being missed all the time, but we're governance. So we actually should be having the oversight, having the time to actually look and digest this information that is being given to us. And, and 15 to 20 minutes, I don't believe, for the rest of the councillors, I personally don't believe that that's enough time. And I know I'm only speaking on, on, on my own behalf, but I would really like to see how the other councillors do feel about, about this. I, I just think that we are literally not giving ourselves the opportunity to be able to just just breathe, take some time, any questions to be able to put those so that way when the draft comes back, it's being fed into by governance, all of us. And and I understand that there were um uh, that that three have seen it, but but the majority of us have not had an opportunity in any way, shape or form until it's been set down here. And this is just uh, you know and, and being told that we have to rush it and get it put through, I'm sorry, but that's that's not how I roll. And I think every single person that voted for me knows that's not how I roll. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, but what, um, what I might just do is make another comment, which is the last the suggestion has been made that we have in for 20 minutes. It is collectively possible for us to reject that and to get to return until possibly six o'clock tonight, for example. Um, so while we're hearing from other people, could you please think about um, how long you think a suitable adjournment might be and just sort of look around the room and see whether anybody else is, I think, I think people nod in agreement. So mm -hmm. we would do that. Um, okay. Now, if you speak now, you're using it for writing reply, um, and that would indicate that I'm not going to let anybody else speak, which I am going to let anybody else speak if they speak. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah, I do. I, I think, um, and I, I take on board what Pip says, but the reality is that we've had a number of workshops um, where we've debated and gone through the detail, the, de the I guess the uh, all the detail of what's this document here. So, if are you just, sure? Hang on, hang on, just hang on. Let you haven't read it yet. So, 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 theory. What happens, is, of course, is that this document, the draft, has captured all that information. For instance, that was fed into that workshop, uh, looking at where we've actually landed uh, as a collective body. So, uh, so in terms of being able to uh, put it into um, context. That's exactly what the document has done. It's captured all that information and those discussions and debates that we've actually had. So, so how do you know that you haven't even, we haven't even read it yet? Okay, well that's that's why there was an adjournment to see whether or not it has been captured. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Uh, I think Councillor Maynard's point is what was the suitable length for an adjournment, Councillor. I mean. I uh, I hope that this is a representation of the conversations that we've had, and I the second layer to that is that I know there are people on this table who've had an opportunity to look through it and make sure that it is. So I have confidence in that. What I don't have confidence in is the process on tabling a document for people to look at on the day and approve it, mostly from a disability point of view. If we had people around the table who had learning disorders, ADHD, dyslexia, this would not be an appropriate way for them to effectively read it and understand it in a crowded room. So that's now, can, can I say that I'm always much happier as the chair with people who um, have problems with the proposal uh, would suggest what their alternative proposal is. So could you do that, please? Well, I think in this setting, it it would be very hard for me. I don't struggle with reading. I think this is okay for me. Um, but if I did, I would find it very hard to stay in front of a room full of people 
I can't absorb this in 15 minutes. Um, I need more time because I have a disability. That's it's quite an ableist process, whether that's an issue for today or not, but it's certainly something that should be considered in future council settings, whether or not this is a wider way. I come back to my question, what is your alternative? Well, it would depend on... I guess I have Adjourn for longer? Yeah, adjourn for longer or to have different uh, time or space to be able to read it in or um, to have access to the document prior to the meeting to be able to read it. Um, I think there would be other ways to make it more yeah. disability if friendly. Like if, if, if I be just a little more yeah. specific, we, we cannot give access to people prior to the meeting. meeting uh, we're in the position. Uh, so we're now voting on what do we do now. And if, if we are as some of us clearly are mm -hmm. happy with the process, we need to tell our fellow councillors what the better alternative is. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that there, it's been presented with a pretty extreme level of urgency attached to it. So I don't know that adjourning for a long period of time until this evening is appropriate, but possibly a few hours to be able to read it and go through and make sure that it lines up with notes to be able to take it out of this environment and look at it somewhere else. Councillor McCall. Um, yes, I certainly want to make sure that, that we're not ascribing any blame to anyone for this. Oh. There's been some extenuating mm. circumstances, mm. Um, which have meant there's incredible time pressure on this, um, but the time pressure is on the day. And I do feel too, though, I mean, we've had a very trusted small group looking at the detail, but um, all due respect to Councillor Olds, we can't, as our, in our governance, we can't assume that our able-bodied councillors have um, taken the role of our governance decision. And we do have to make sure we are fully informed um, individually and severally. So I, I would um, support um, Councillor Pope because I think if we adjourn to six o'clock tonight, it will still give the delivery of the time frame that our um, SWC staff need, I think, to finish it. Um, so you yes, would support Councillor Pope. Councillor, could, could we just hear from the staff on that last point you made? Yeah. How, how urgent the time is here? Where, yes. where are we sitting in time? Yeah, if we finish it tonight, does that give you your deadline? Well, I will invite the Chief Executive. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, the, the substantive um, decisions, there's two things to play. One is the actual um, decisions the Council wants to make. When it, adopts, when it adopts the draft for consultation. So that is um, the level of um, funding required to provide services to council and the matter will not be consulted. So um, we had, we had um, discussed that at length with council um, and council has endorsed, uh, has given us an indication um, of, of the direction it wants to go. Um, so the second thing, and that's the substantive decisions that need to be made today in adopting the document. We're not proposing that you, you finalise um, the actual document itself in terms of the tone, the content. We, can still, we still want to work on that with you. We've had great advice from um, the small group that you asked to represent you um, in terms of the information and how that would be presented. Um, and in part, one of the reasons is we've got such good and wide-ranging feedback that we've tried to accommodate um, that into the document itself, which is made more challenging to bring together. But I just I reiterate, um, I certainly support um, that it was more time, but I'm confident that the document itself reflects the, the indications you've given us about the level of... of um, Revenue that is required to um, provide council services that hasn't changed at all in this document. Um, the examples are exactly the same ones that have been presented to council. Some of the consultation questions, um, there are four of them, and they reflect the, um, the conversations that council asked us to consult on. So the substantive thing is actually what are you asking in terms of uh, the costs of providing services that's changed? And what are the consultations that you want to ask the council? That hasn't changed. And we have time. So one of the recommendations when you read the cover report is to adopt the principle 
so that we have time to refine the actual wording of the documents, which is a different, it's a different, so that you've got the time. Mm -hmm. right. And so I'll take that too. Could I look? Can I just say, Pip, I, I agree with what you've said, uh, but I recognise the time constraints here. To move this along, could perhaps we just adjourn till 12 and come back and say, are we ready at that stage? If not, have a further adjournment. I'll seek the comment. Yeah. 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 My concern is, reading my emails yesterday, which included the ones from Monday, is that the annual report has been which was meant to come to the table today, has been pushed back and now is saying that it won't come back to the council table until the 7th of June. This document on the first page, now that I'm seeing it, says that the public consultation is open from 9am tomorrow and closes at 5pm on Saturday the 27th of May. So that is prior to the annual report coming to the council table now by moving it from here. The annual plan... Normally, when you look at it, you go back through and have a look at where the annual report is telling you that the next part phase of what you're needing for the annual plan. That annual that annual report needs to be also here at midday, so that way that can be in here for for our when it goes out that our public can actually see that information along with the annual plan draft. So that way, any concerns that they have, everything is all matching up. You know, I, I'm, I'm really, really confused as to what, what is going on. Um, so I don't mind if it, if it can happen at 12, if everyone's happy with that. However, I'd also like the annual report to be here at 12 too. Well, it can only be the draft annual. And, and just remember, it's actually for, for the annual report was scheduled for yeah. adoption by council on the 26th of April. Adopted by council. Um, but can I assure you, there's no reason why the draft can't be here, but just remember, it's two years old. So um, I know uh, what you're saying, but it's two years old. Now, I think I saw your hand. No, it's not two years old. No, no, just um, just thinking that I actually have to leave at midday. I'm on the road at midday, and I, cannot, I have an engagement in Hawke's Bay at six o'clock this evening. So. What you're talking about, well, I'll have to absolve myself from that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm stunned and I'm slightly appalled at this process. This is not what I thought was going to happen at all. Did I see your hand? Yeah. Um, Firstly, I'd just like to thank the staff. I know the time constraints and everything's been a bit hectic for everyone. Um, thanks for getting info to us. But yes, I, I would have at least liked to have seen it last night. I emailed out to us last night. Um, I, I understand all the views that have been put across today. Um, Pip, I understand what you were talking about with the annual report. In an email we got about the annual report, and, oh, sorry, about, about this, how we have to have it done, otherwise we're going to look bad. <coughs> uh, are we going to look worse by not having the annual report done first, which isn't anyone's fault. It's all because of audit, I understand. It's basically <coughs> that's what's stuffed that up. So would have we been better to go out with the long-term plan budget, explaining to the public that because of the audit, we can't give you a fair representation of what has been and what is going to be, and actually gone in those couple of months late with this, but which did more than I. I think it would be fair to say that since the auditor has actually given his um, tick, uh, we can go out with the draft uh, and report and with considerable comfort uh, that people can believe what it says. I wonder, Councillor Gray, Councillor Maynard, whether this might be a good moment to move an amendment to the motion that instead of 20 minutes, we adjourn until some time that you think is more suitable. Um, um, Mr. Reeve, I, I just didn't have my question answered before. Sorry, Harry, but I asked what time frame that the um, SWDC can have, because Harry didn't, didn't quite answer what time we could um, read this to. Like, if we did do it at 6 o'clock tonight, would that hold up um, you people meeting your deadline? I didn't get an answer to that. Um, that's what I wanted to know, because I know the deadline's actually really important, and, you know, this has caused this, um, this discontent amongst the councillors, but I think it's important to know 
how late we can do um, work today and you still continue to get finished. Um, yeah. So, so, um, yeah. Ideally, um, 12 would be perfect. Well, um, you could uh, finish. Because as I said, you know, what you, what you do need to have comfort is, is that we are reflecting um, your guidance to us in yeah. the document. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I have confidence once you read it, um, that you'll see it as an accurate reflection. So I think so if, if we June to 12, we could still meet the deadline. Or we could go to one. Yeah, yeah. That's Sorry. Right. Uh, what was that? What are you doing? Yeah. Oh, you mean? Yeah. Did you smile? No, I didn't. Again, it's part of that reason is that um, we're really important to have Councillor Wally really able to be part of the decision making. Um, <laughs> at 12, will that still work for you? No, I've got to leave at 12. Yeah. Leave at 12. I need to be on the road by one. Then I've got to leave the road back. Uh, I, I could meet with Councillor Bosley in advance and put notes on his comments. To the extent. Okay. I, I also comment that to say that um, if we give our, you know, say, approval in sort of theory subject to more tweaking, that if it's to come out at 9 a.m. tomorrow, there, there cannot be more tweaking. Therefore, this is actually our last opportunity uh, to either express happiness or otherwise. Now, um, again, we'll get a right to apply, um, but uh, are there others who would do? Okay, there are not the assumptions. Okay, can make a the annual report? Um, so, first of all, the, um, all the financial information that around the council's positions was released in the, in the last year. So, the, so that is to the FAR committee. Um, so, it was, it was the financial. Um, balance as at the 30th of June has been available to council since that time. That's the first call. Has it been made publicly available? Yes. yes. Yep. So, that, so, it's, so, so, and that's, uh, Harry, that's not the annual report, is it? No, it's not the annual report. No, report. no. So no. let's not confuse that. You said you were talking about the annual report. The annual report is now available for us, but it's, um, and the draft was meant to come here today. I believe the draft should be here today. To go out at the same time as this draft. Um, um, the, the process for the annual report is to go through audit and risk committee, so it can be recommended to council. Um, and so, so but given that, but given the time frame, and we're being told that this is this the time frame is so super tight and has to be done. What's the difference? Well, okay, can I once again make a comment? Um, I, I don't believe there is any different quite uh, any difficulty in making the draft available. But in order for it to happen, somebody has to move a resolution to that effect, please. So if it's what you want, please make a resolution accordingly. But not just at the moment, because we're in the process of discussing another resolution. Okay. So uh, does anybody want to comment further on the 20 minute proposal for an adjournment? If so, I will invite the Deputy Mayor to make any comments. Um, look, I've, I, as I said at the beginning of this, I've got no problem with the extension of time. That's fine. I think one thing to keep in mind as you read this document is um, do you feel that it tells the story? Like, does it tell the story of of how we got here and where we're trying to go and uh do you have confidence that the that the numbers and figures are correct because that's what we need to be sure of i i would i think urge against getting down into the weeds of editing the words within this document i think we need to look at it at a level of does it tell the story does it does it engage with our community at a level it needs to and and is it accurate and, and try not to think about uh, editing each and every sentence in it. Um, and that will take us in a good place. Right. So um, we're about to put the motion, but I must ask our secretary to reread it so that we know exactly what it says. So to adjourn the meeting for 20 minutes to discuss the topic.
20 minutes. No, and I, no I'd never yeah, said 20 so minutes either. That was sorry, just it, that, it, that, it, that it's not your resolution. Oh, right, sorry. That's what I was on it, yeah. The FDB's resolution. Right, sorry. It was just said that Council Maynard had asked me to Sorry, second So did everybody here no vote on whether we adjourn for 20 minutes? All in favour, please say aye. All against, please say no. 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 Okay. The motion is lost. Do I have an alternative? Councillor Woodcock. Uh, I move that we are uh, June to 12 o'clock. And uh, we have that. It's time to go through it. And, exactly. And do we have a second? We do, Councillor Peter. Now, if we would, would you like to comment? Yeah, can uh, make a tell us yeah. why, please. Yeah. Um, I just think it's a little bit more time, and if everyone sort of even finishes, everyone says what well, we're done at eleven, we can come back earlier. It just gives us that enough time to make sure everyone does, and um, and it still sticks within the time frame Harry sort of suggested. Councillor Elams, I just uh, just agree with um. What Councillor Woodcock has said, also hopefully it'll give uh, Councillor Bosley some time to uh, go through that fight, that, that detail, and, uh, and and share his thoughts. Comments? Um, no. Councillor Peter? Yeah, I'm just going to say that I think it's time to go discuss the table. Thank you. Um, and, and this, and this we're ready about, prior? We're about to put the motion. What was this amendment? Oh, well, it's too late for that change. All in favour, please say aye. Yeah. Yeah. Against, please say no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Against, the motion is carried. The meeting is adjourned till midday. That means we can Mm -hmm. and, and you, you, you'd make that same. Yeah, I have a proposal. Sorry. 